welcome to the Shine A Light series, a part of Black History Month with the black professionals at Samsung. I'm your host, DT. Everybody knows me by now, but I head up the I Am Training division in Connor Pierce's team. Uh, we are gonna be shining a light on individuals over the next couple of weeks where you'll get to learn, experience, and see who works at Samsung. And without further ado, I wanna kick off the Shine a Light series with our very first guest, Chloe Finley Walker. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Yes, good, thank you. How's good. it going? Yeah, good. Do you know what? It's been a really good day. Um, and I'm really glad you're here as the first person yes. on our Shine A Light series. So for those who don't know Chloe, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Chloe. Um, in terms of starting at Samsung, I started about last April, so April 2020. Yeah. So I started during the pandemic. So there's loads of people that I haven't met face to face, but yeah. quite a lot of people have spoken to an email. But I guess like me as a person, um, I come from Caribbean background, so my dad's from Trinidad and my mum's from Dominica, so wow. yeah, a small island girl. So the arguments in your house must yeah. have been uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I come from a massive family, so I've yeah. got five sisters and I've got one brother. I'm, I'm actually the youngest girl and my brother's the youngest boy, so quite spoiled. He's the youngest out of all of us, so yeah, he's a bit of, bit of the, the golden boy. But um, yeah. Yeah, I come from a big family, got loads of nieces and nephews. There's quite a lot of us, I'm a very like, family orientated girl. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. Really. Cool. So you started in the pandemic with Samsung. I did. What was that transition like from your previous job to, to Samsung coming in? Um, it was hectic, to be honest. Yeah. I think right at the beginning of the pandemic, everything was very uncertain. Mm. I guess now it is still a little bit, but at the beginning, I think everyone will just remember like the chaos and that kind of like mixed feeling. So I think joining a job during that time, yeah. um, it was quite difficult, to be honest, mm -hmm. because I think when I start, when I had like, um, officially handed in my notice to where I previously worked, yep. which was Sky. Um, and then I started Samsung, but there was a bit of a break and it was like, can, can I start, can I not start because of the new rules around the pandemic? Yep. But I managed to start and I think, yeah, it was a really difficult transition at the time. And I think mm -hmm. starting a big business like Samsung and it's so crazy, yeah. um, being able to navigate that was yep. really tough at the beginning. But I think with the right support, with the right line management, the good team, yep. um, I was able to navigate quite well, which is quite nice. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Chloe actually works in the CMI team. Uh, what does CMI stand for? And tell me what you what you do. What's your day to day? Yeah. So it's part of the consumer insights team. Mm -hmm. So basically anything customer related, anything yeah. to do with consumers, understanding our customers in more detail. I'm your girl, basically. <laughs> um, and we do loads of things. So we go actually go and speak to customers firsthand. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of um, face to face interviews with the support of some external agencies. Mm -hmm. um, we do some survey tracking, which can kind of be like online data resource. Um, and we do loads of different stuff. So mm -hmm. what we really want to do is bring that voice of the customer to be in the heart of the business. Yeah. So any decisions that we made, whether it be product related, whether it mm -hmm. be related to service or whatever it is, yeah. we want the customer to be at the heart of that. So our brand is always reflecting the yeah. customer. And I think we're on a journey with that process, mm -hmm. um, but definitely um, working to kind of get those insights and that customer understanding yeah. spread throughout the business. Yeah, nice. Now, speaking of the voice of the customer, We've had in the last 18 months, uh, the voice of people, uh, and there's been some real difficult conversations and difficult times. Um, what's your experience been like over the last uh, 18 months with Black Lives Matter, George Floyd and the unfortunate death uh, that he had, and also the way that it's been transpired for yourself personally, but also how, is it, how has that affected like, members of your family? Yeah, I think to be completely transparent, it's been difficult and mm. it's been um, emotional. It's yep. been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I think from a personal point of view, mm -hmm. um, the media coverage on it was in a way positive to mm -hmm. bring light on the situation, yeah. but it was exhausting at the same time. Mm -hmm. Every single social media platform I went on, every time I switched on the TV, it would be about George Floyd. Yeah. And as that happened to someone that is black and mm -hmm. I'm black myself, that kind of being able to relate to that person, yeah. it was a really difficult time. And I was very mm. emotional. I was very emotional. When it first happened, I think I cried like basically every day that week. Yeah. So overwhelming to see that happen. I think when you understand the deeper meanings behind it mm. and you start to understand that actually this isn't something new yeah. and actually this is something we also see in England too. Of we course. don't get the same amount of coverage on it, but it happens. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, understanding that 
um, I just found it a very difficult time. It was very emotional. There were some times when I'd come into work or log on to a call and you know, people would be like, how are you? And I'd be mm. like, I'm fine. But really, I'm actually not fine. Yeah. Not fine. I've actually had a shit morning. I've had yeah. a shit day. All my friends want to talk about is this situation because it mm. takes over our life so much because it's not just something that we see as, oh, it's on the news. Yeah, we can continue with our day. Mm. It's very hard to separate. I agree. Um, so I think, yeah, that time for me at the beginning of the 18 months was more difficult. Yeah. I would say that I think towards the end of the, like the end of this year that we've mm. been seeing a lot more positive light, sh yeah. like a positive spin on the situation. And I think for me, I just try and look on that outtake in life anyway. Yeah. And I think that um, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do. There's no doubt about it. It's a conversation that we need to continue to have. Yeah. But I think some businesses have taken steps in the right way. Like I've seen a lot of brands really up in their diversity in mm -hmm. terms of who they show in their in their ads, with, on their website, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of more, a lot more people are actively standing up and saying this isn't right. Yeah. And I think that's been a positive for me. I think mm -hmm. with especially over the Euros, over the summer, yeah. um, seeing a lot of people like actually take the knee and support that. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a lot against that as well. Of course. But seeing the number of, I can just say, English players that stood up and kind of was like, actually, we're not having this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do my part and at least take the knee to show my support of this yeah. from both black players and players of other ethnicities, I thought yeah. was really great. Yeah. Um, and I'm a big I'm a big netball girl as well. Like I play a lot of netball and they have been playing all over summer as well. And yeah. they all take the knee religiously every single game. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is being communicated, not just within football, which is obviously our biggest sport, but yeah. across um, a number of platforms and a number of sports, which I think is is a positive spin to it, but mm -hmm. so much work to do. 100%. I mean, I'd, I, I'd agree with you on, on the emotive part. It was probably the toughest experience I've had myself um, and having two young daughters that are seeing their their dad who always puts a Superman cape on yeah. and says everything's all right to actually showcase my emotion to my kids for them to say actually no this isn't been right has been a, a really challenging situation and I, I agree with you on things are starting to change in the right way and, and we can see that people are standing up to it even more, which is a really, really good thing. Yeah, and I think as well, just having those conversations, like you said, with your daughters, with mm. the younger generation, they are bloody hard conversations to yeah. have because yeah. it's, do we want to shelter our kids from this and actually mm. protect their innocence? Yeah. Or do we want to expose them to this sort of situation so they're prepared for what they might experience later on in life? Yeah. And I think, you know, as much as, as a black child, sometimes you don't get that privilege of having that innocence because we have to make sure they're aware of what your experience might be as a black woman or what your experience might be as a, as a young black boy growing up in London. We have to expose our kids so that they're prepared. So I think it's a very, a very difficult conversation to have and yeah. it's each individual's choice to whether they're going to expose their kids to that. Yeah. But it's a reality for kids and I think that's something that everybody needs to understand yeah. for black kids in particular and mm -hmm. um, growing up in England but especially growing up in London yeah. those are things that we have to make our kids aware about so early sure. so that experience yeah. that differentiation between what a black person's experience might be versus others starts very young right. doesn't just start when you enter the workplace or yeah. when you go to university or if you experience one racist event that mm -hmm. is embedded in you from young yeah. and I think it's important for everyone to kind of understand that yeah. And now we've, we've uh, established and developed our brand new Black Professional platform. What does that mean to you and what can the platform do to elevate more voices? Yeah, first of all, I'm so excited about it and so excited to be a part of it. Good. I just think it's great. And I think that what it means to me is mm. that I am working for a brand that wants to make change. Yeah. And I think that's something that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, to be transparent, there's not enough of us. Yeah. But I think being given the opportunity to put together this group has shown that we're trying to make a change in the right direction, which is great. Yeah. So to be part of that is obviously incredible. It's amazing. Mm. And I'm willing to do anything really yeah. to make sure that this conversation keeps going. Good. But I think what we could do mm -hmm. to, I guess, like what the group can provide is just at the beginning, providing some awareness. Yeah. I think sometimes we, people might not know the experiences and, you know, that's not for whatever reason that is. Mm -hmm. But I think, shining a light on yeah. these on the issues that we experience and making sure I think that goes beyond just the people that are involved in the group yeah. it goes beyond black colleagues as well mm -hmm. it is for everyone to yeah. be on board with this if we mm -hmm. want to work for a business or yeah. a company that is going to 
champion diversity and that is going to make sure that everybody is equal yep. this is something for everybody not just for black professionals so mm -hmm. yes it's called black professionals yep. but it's not just for us it's for everyone for and everybody. if you want to support your black colleagues yep. this is a safe space for you to do so brilliant thank you very much chloe i was going to wrap up there but i'm going to ask you some quick fire round questions yes. okay uh let's go with favorite food mm, roti a roti? Yeah. What do you have inside your roti? Now, because yeah. I've changed, I've gone like now pescatarian. Oh, really? So, yeah, so okay. now I would have like veg, I would have like um, pumpkin, sweet potato, yeah. but previously lamb roti all day long. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, what's your favourite Caribbean island? Um, Dominica. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> bias. Dominica, because that's, yeah, that's where I've grown, grown up at. I used to, I went there a lot as a kid. Um, yeah. It has my heart. Favourite music? <sighs> A mixture between Lovers Rock and Soul. Okay, Lovers Rock. Yeah, I yeah. love Lovers Rock. I'm my mum's kid for and through. I love Lovers Rock. <laughs> Is that um, that every Saturday morning you get up and every, you wake up to Lovers Saturday, Rock? Every Saturday, every Sunday with the cleaning around yeah. the house. That Yeah, I love Lovers Rock. Cool, okay. And one last question for you. It's going to be Samsung related. Yes. What's been your favourite Samsung product and why? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, we have loads, right? You do have loads. <laughs> loads of really, really good ones, so it's hard to say. But for me, mm. I would say the new Flip device. Yep. I just think it's wicked. As a 90s kid, it gives me that that retro vibe. It gives it a bit nostalgic. Yeah. Um, the colours, I love pink all day long. So those pink colours that it came out in was really good for me. And I just think it's just a really nice product. Fixing your pocket really nice. And it's just something a bit different, yeah. I think. With some of the other products that we do, they're obviously really fantastic, but they visually look very similar to other mobile phones. Yeah. So having that product, I just think, you know, it's exciting. It's something to, yeah, really get a bit happy about. So that's nice. my favourite product so far. Cool. You just said 90s, baby. I feel old, man. Right. <laughs> so that is the end of our Shine a Light series. We have Shine a Light on Chloe Finley Walker. My name has been DT. Look out for the next episode where you'll get to meet some other black professionals at Samsung. Thanks a lot. Thanks,